Yeah, we're also joined from Beirut by Maha Yaya, the uh, director of the Carnegie Middle East Center. Um, we, the Iranian National Guard is apparently going to come out with a statement any time now. Um, that's the big concern, isn't it? Whether Iran will directly respond to this attack on their territory. How concerned are you about that? Good morning and thank you for having me. I'm very concerned. Uh, the uh, Khamenei just came out and said that this happened on, on Iranian soil and therefore we have a responsibility to respond. Um, unlike the assassination of Imad Mughniye, this did happen in Tehran. Um, and um, so I am very concerned that uh, Iran is going to want to respond in a certain way uh, that sends a message. However, I think they will think carefully about this, knowing full well that any kind of response is going to pull an American reaction in. It's not just about Israel, it's also about the US. And the last thing Iran wants right now is to get into a direct conflict with the United States uh, at this point. Ma, let me ask you, it's Becky Anderson here um, uh, out of London today. Let hi, me Ricky. ask you, can you, hi, good to, good to have you on. You're on the ground in Beirut. Um, I've uh, been watching what you've been posting over the last 24 hours in response, of course, to the assassination of uh, the Hezbollah leader there. What, how would you describe the atmosphere and what, what are your sources telling you about what happens next? Um, what happens next is really an unknown at this point. Um, no one has any idea in terms of how Hezbollah is going to respond. They still haven't even uh, announced that uh, Fuad Shukr is dead. Um, the statement that they just put out earlier today said that he was in the building but did not confirm that he was killed. Um, earlier reports had indicated that he was in the building but had left. So we're not sure where things are on that front. But the mood is very somber. People are very anxious and very worried about the prospect of an escalation, one that Lebanon cannot afford. Uh, Lebanon has been down this road so many times with Israel already, uh, 78, 82, 93, 96, and 2006. These are all dates of uh, Israeli invasions of Lebanon or war between Lebanon and Israel. So it's not something that uh, the Lebanese want to see uh, yet or live through one more time. There's also quite a bit of cynicism around, uh, you know, that the fact that Israel is using the horrific uh, uh, attack on uh, Majd al-Shams um, uh, in a way to kind of eliminate more of its adversaries uh, and uh, do away with the prospect of any ceasefire uh, with the Palestinians. They really want to turn this into a conflict between Israel and Iran rather than mm. uh, with the Palestinians. There's a lot of concern around that, which then means that this will not be limited to, uh, you know, this, this is going to drag in the US and others uh, into, into the fold especially if uh, Iran's other partners and proxies in the region also get involved, as we're all expecting, mm -hmm. and uh, as you've they have already. You've obviously studied how Hezbollah operates for many years. Why do you think they're not confirming the death? Are they trying to figure out a strategy and a message there? They're probably trying to figure out what to do next on the one hand, and perhaps, um, I mean, they may not have located the body, quite honestly. They're still searching under the rubble. The toll has now risen to four dead and 80 injured as a result of this attack. So um, I think they're, they're buying some time probably to try and coordinate with Iran and see how best to respond to this and in what way. Um, but they, 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 they cannot take it sitting down, but at the same time, they understand that any kind of response is going to drag, uh, you know, bring, bring on another reaction from Israel. And we could just go down a path of a regional conflict that will literally um, see the end of, of uh, Lebanon as it is today. Yeah, I mean, what a statement. Um, it's it's Mar horrific. It's, it's yeah. just... Uh, the prospects are are uh, are just terrific, and it's yeah. 
It's frightening. The sense of adventurism, I think, uh, and a sense of impunity that uh, this particular Israeli government is, is, is showing. I mean, the key to all of this is a ceasefire in Gaza. Get a ceasefire. I mean, enough, enough bloodshed, enough killing. Get yep. a ceasefire in Gaza and de-escalate in the rest of the region. We're that seeing the certainly. exact opposite. That's certainly what uh, you and I are hearing around the region, and we have been hearing that around, around the region since, of course, you know, mid, mid-October. Maha, it's good to have you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, is, I mean, the prospect